Local public schools could soon be under the control of the county executive. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Patricia Ballone. Thank you for joining us. Well, Prince George's County Executive Rashern Baker is planning a takeover of the struggling public school system. The controversial move requires state legislation that would put Baker in charge of not only the billion dollar school budget, but also over the superintendent. This would significantly reduce the power of the elected school board. The school system is the second largest in the state, but has consistently been at the bottom in statewide rankings. Denise Douglas has the full report. This has been studied for a little while. Christian Rhodes is the architect of County Executive Rashern Baker's controversial plan to take over the school board. Um, really two simple pieces. One is moving the superintendent to become a cabinet level position under the county executive. The superintendent would be appointed by Baker and the county executive would also take control of the school system's $1.7 billion budget, essentially reducing the power of the elected school board. Instead, they would focus on academic policy and parental engagement. Rhodes says it's about the best use of resources. The goal of this is not to take away their power, but really to en enhance the skills that they have. Academic policy is, to us, the number one thing that our school district should be focused on. Um, but oftentimes, school board members are forced to dig into deep into the operations of the school district, and that oftentimes takes away from policy. But not everyone sees it that way. And this is one of the things I don't agree with him on. Pat Fletcher represented District 3, which included Suitland, Capitol Heights, and Landover when she was on the board. I think people in Prince George's County want the right to make decisions for themselves. Um, and one of those decisions that the citizens of Prince George's County has is to make a decision on how the school system is ran. In a statement, Baker says his proposal is an effort to make the school system stronger. The move follows years of struggle to improve the performance of schools in the county. Back in 2002, when he was a state delegate, Baker led a successful effort to replace the elected school board with an appointed one. Mm -hmm. However, after a public backlash, the county went back to electing the members. Still, Baker <coughs> believes this is the right time to revamp the system as the county looks to hire a new superintendent who will be held accountable for moving schools forward. The county executive said not too long ago that this is not about his administration. This is putting processes in place that push us much further past this administration. And we, won't, we may not see the results immediately, but I can guarantee that we will see some results immediately as it relates to our operations, which can help us funnel money into the classroom. Right now, the county executive is in Annapolis lobbying lawmakers to pass legislation that would allow him to restructure the school board. He's pushing to have the measure pass the House and Senate before the General Assembly session ends in April. I'm Denise Douglas, CTV News. There are 123,000 students in the county school system. Meantime, residents are sharing their reactions to the county executive's proposal. CTV caught up with both parents and former students who had mixed opinions about the state of Prince George's schools and the idea of a restructured system. So I don't really know whether all the power should be one place or not. Um, I think the school board's in a better position to make judgments regarding the school, but it's still okay to be accountable to the county executive as well. When I went to Virginia schools, they're like at the bottom of the barrel, like their system is slower than PG. When I transferred, I was just like, okay, I'm ahead of everything with PG county system schools. Well, to be honest with you, to put all of the power in one man's hand, I, I don't know if that's the answer, but I, I guess it's, it's worth, um, coming before panel and discussing those options and, and, and seeing what's best over time to, to devise a better plan uh, to help our kids, yeah. And all three residents tell CTV News that they do feel improvements need to be made within the school system, but add, but add that they are not sure that putting the county executive in charge is the answer. Well, Rochelle Metzger has been working to get a comment from the school board. Members met in executive session in Upper Marlboro this afternoon. She has more from the newsroom. We made numerous attempts today to speak with members of the Board of Education to get their reaction to the county executive's proposal. We reached out through phone calls, emails, as well as going up to the Sasser building in Upper Marlboro, but we weren't allowed past the lobby. 
Now, we did ask school officials for an interview or at the very least a public statement. Board members did go into a executive session at 2 p.m. and as of 4 p.m. they had not come out. It's unclear whether they will choose to release a public statement, but if they do, we will bring that to you. In the newsroom, Rochelle Metzger, CTV News. And CTV will continue to follow this story and bring you the latest when more information becomes available. Well, one person is dead tonight after their vehicle overturned and caught fire on the Route 704 ramp in Springdale over the Beltway. The incident happened about 1 p.m. A Prince George's police officer was first on the scene and tried to rescue the victim who was trapped when the vehicle burst into flames. The officer sustained burn injuries and was taken to a local hospital. An SUV was traveling westbound on MLK Highway. He struck a guardrail before coming to the overpass over the Beltway. At that point, he began careening down the roadway sideways. At some point, the car caught fire with the driver still trapped inside. We had to back off. The one officer, he has burns on his arm. His hands was all cut up. B both hands were cut. He has burns to his face just from the heat, I'm trying to reach in and get the guy out of the car. And the officer's injuries are considered non-life threatening. The cause of the crash remains under investigation, but it does appear that speed played a role. Well, one woman is dead and a man is in custody after a stabbing this morning that authorities say was likely domestic related. Prince George's police are investigating the incident. Officials say someone called 911 about 830 this morning to report it. Officers responded to an apartment in the 5200 block of Morris Avenue in Camp Springs. Uh, when officers arrived, we found an adult female suffering from stab wounds. Uh, she was transported to a local hospital where she was pronounced dead. Um, the suspect at the time fled the scene. Uh, officers were able to locate the suspect a short time later. As of right now, it appears to be an isolated incident and also domestic related. We're still trying to determine the cause of the, you know, of the, you know, the incident. As of right now, there was a, a, another adult male on the scene. He did sustain some minor injuries, but they're still trying to determine whether that was involving the uh, suspect at the time. And the names of the victim and the suspect have not been released. Detectives are still working to determine their exact relationship and a motive for the stabbing. And you're watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone.